Yo, what's good, YouTube? I'm back with another reaction video, and we got Larry Bird on a Dan Patrick show. It's for an interview. Now, I did see a couple of these clips from what I did, uh, some of his videos, and they show little clips. Uh, yeah, but this is actually the full interview from the Dan Patrick show. So let's get straight into this video, man. Deeply, deeply appreciate all the love and support y'all been showing me. Definitely grinding out and knocking these videos out. But uh, yeah, let's get straight into the video, man. Subscribe if you're new. Hit that like button. Turn on that bell. You won't never miss an upload, man. I'm going every single day, man. We're going about four months straight. But uh, yeah, let's get straight into this video, man. Let's get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. Larry Bird. Larry Joe Bird is on the line. Coach, how you doing? Good, Reggie. How you doing today? I'm doing fantastic. Now, I you probably didn't get a chance to see this, but we were playing that game four shot versus Chicago um, that Derek McKee threw to me, and I lightly nudged Michael Jordan and got the shot off, and I was doing pir <laughs> pirouettes. They, they, if people, they don't talk about the shot that come up to me. They talk about your reaction to the shot, which there was no reaction. Like, you were stoic. Your expression did not change. Well, Reggie, there's so much going on at that time. Right. Um, it was a hard-fought game. We were up. We were down. Um, you came off the screen from um, the left side to the right side. You got the ball. Michael pushed off on you. Gave you a little space. <laughs> you make the shot, and I didn't know if the whistle blew or not. I didn't know what happened. Then... I looked up, and it's four-tenths of a second. Now, you know in the NBA right. that they're going to put four-tenths of a second up there, which scared the hell out of me. It should have been 2.2 2 <laughs> seconds. No one that he's going to Michael, he's going to get the ball, and he's going to get a clean look. He got, he got the ball, he pumped fake, took one dribble, and almost made it. He banked it in, and it came out. And really, it took three seconds to get the shot off. But you knew they were going to have time to have an opportunity to score. So I, I was in amazement because... They should never have been uh, four-tenths of a second. It should have been two-tenths. The game should have been over. But they gave him an opportunity to win the game, and that's what scared me. And, by the way, that was in our building. That wasn't in Chicago. So you sure. thought we would have right. had a better scorekeeper in our own building, a little homer. Well, you know, I walked down there um, <laughs> with the four-tenths and made sure they was going to start the clock on time. But if you remember, Michael got up and pump faked and took yeah. one dribble and still got it off in time. And, you know, being at home, that – before the ball even came in, they should have had the horn go off. In, t in today's game, less than a minute, let's say less than 30 seconds, in today's game, who are some of the players, because you've watched them all, obviously, being the president of the Indiana Pacers, who are those go-to guys, those go-to players like you were for those great Boston Celtics team? And you could put Paul well, George you know in this category. Yeah, Paul. Paul's getting better and better. But, you know, LeBron, you know he's going to get it and try to drive, get to the hole, get fouled. Uh, Kevin Durant's really good. Westbrook's going to try to attack the rim. In them situations, you always like guys going to the hole. Um, you know, a lot of times guys settle for off-balance shots, fadeaways. Um, you know, they fight against the clock. But I like the guys that get it and, and try to make something happen to the rim and, 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 and you know, leave the, the call up to the officials. And um, uh, LeBron's always very good at it. There's so many great players in our in our league now, Reggie, that that can make shots at the end of games. It's 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 really fun to watch. The the style of the NBA today, more threes. Um, you know, the, the floor is stretched a little bit more. There's not as much contact. The physical play is gone. How do you think your game would have translated in today's game? Well, you always have to make adjustments with your game. It's mm -hmm. just like coming from. Uh, college to the pros, you know, I had to get a step back shot. I had to shoot the ball a little bit higher at times in the post. Um, you know, I never worked on the three-point shot when I played. Uh, I know around um, uh, when they had the All-Star game, I, I shot a few threes, but I never went out there and, and just shot, you know, like 100 to 200 threes every day like guys do now. I mean, when our players walk on the court now, they, they do a little bit, then they go right to the three-point line. So right. the game has changed in that. that and then I'm sure – uh, back in the day, if we were shooting a lot more threes, we would have uh, spent a lot more time working on it. We're talking with Larry Bird on the Dan Patrick Show. What conversations before Paul George left for Rio did you have in light of everything that happened two years ago, obviously the horrific leg injuries? Did you guys, if any, have any conversations be before he left 
And by the way, as you know, he dropped 20 points last night uh, versus <laughs> yeah. Venezuela. Yeah, the kid just keeps getting better and better. He's a hard worker. He's dedicated to his craft. He, uh, we, we talked a little bit, but nothing about the injury. We, we put that away. We don't even like to talk about it. And I, I knew when he went over there it was going to be brought up time after time. But um, I think Paul sort of put it in the back of his mind and just looking forward to playing and, 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 and get, trying to get better. Uh, he enjoys the experience. I know I've been texting him uh, off and on a little bit. He's having fun, and he can't wait to get back and, and see what kind of team we have this year. You were a part of the greatest team ever assembled, the 1992 Dream Team. Obviously, you weren't 100%. You weren't at your best. We all know what you guys did on the court. That was evident. We all watched those games. But everything I heard coming out of that, can you walk us through? I heard the practices were the best basketball no one's ever seen. Am I correct on that? Well, um, before we got over there, uh, you know, once we got into the Olympics, we didn't really practice. Well, I don't even think we practiced at all. Mm -hmm. But um, we were in San, uh, I forget where we was at, San Diego? No, not San Diego. We were somewhere, and we were practicing. We had a lot of fun. When the college kids came in, we practiced against them. Right. That was a lot of fun. And, they're, they're, you know, there's always a lot of good competition when you have Magic on one team and Michael on the other team. Um, and, uh, you know, we had Patrick and, and a lot of guys that talked a lot of smack. Uh, <laughs> but uh, it was fun. Um, I remember they said uh, one of the greatest games that no one ever seen. That was one of the worst practices I ever seen in my life. They, all they guys were doing was talking. <laughs> you know, I think the game was like 28 to 25 or something like that. But uh, other than that, we had a good time. It was a great experience. And, and, you know, winning the goal for your country is always the ultimate. And that's why I told Paul, and he was excited about going. And I said, the one thing is, is you'll never have this experience again. Um, so while you're there, you might as well take advantage of it. Now, were you one of those guys that were kind of – John a little bit, you know. <laughs> well, <laughs> not really. I mean, because, you know, my my time was over. Right. Uh, I knew I wasn't going to play a whole lot. I think I just averaged 18 minutes over there. We had a stacked team. Uh, we knew some nights we were going to play, you know, 15 or 20 minutes, and some nights maybe not as much because there's just so much talent on that team. And, you know, everybody wanted to play. Everybody wanted to get their minutes in. But we knew going out we was going to win by a large margin, and, and we just wanted to make it a great experience for all. Was there one guy on that team that you really didn't know, but you kind of got to know a little bit better throughout that time? Yeah, you, you do. You, you spend some time with some guys. You know, I didn't know David Robinson as well, and obviously Kristen Leitner. Um, some of the guys that played on the West Coast you didn't know as well. Uh, but as far as Magic and Michael and Charles and them guys, uh, you know, I knew them pretty well. You know, shifting towards the Pacers, you guys made a change. Uh, obviously gone is Frank Vogel, who was there for six years. You came out and said you want your Pacers to be more up-tempo, run a little bit more. You hired Nate McMillan. Can you kind of walk us through what the game plan is going to be for Nate's vision for this team? You've added Jeff Teague, Thaddeus Young. Um, so, so what's the overall game plan here for the Indiana Pacers going forward for the upcoming season? Well, when we say we want to run a little bit more, Reggie, we never was talking like Golden State. We don't have that type of players, or Oklahoma City. We, you know, we're, we're basically going to try to uh, score more points off the defensive end by getting steals and, and, and maybe running a little bit more, especially with Jeff Teague able to penetrate and Monte Ailes being able to get in the paint and kicking out. Uh, we want a style where we can you know, score. But I like to score 105 points a game. Uh, maybe 106 if we can, and still defend the way that we're capable of defending. You know, we still have Dan Burke here. He's always been our defensive guy, like Dick Carter was back in the day I was here. Uh, they're very good. Um, you know, we expect to defend well. But, you know, we want to get out and get open a little bit and, and, and maybe shoot more threes. I know Nate's got a game plan. And, and you know, back when Nate's got over 900 games. He's coached in the NBA, and, and he's got a style. And he knows the game has changed a little bit. We've got to get out and move a little bit more. And I think he's going to do an excellent job for us. Well, speaking of shooting threes, Coach, we, have a, we had a poll question on here. Just to let you know, I had nothing to do with this poll question. I'm going to let one of the Danettes, McLovin, ask you this question because he's been dying to ask you this. Okay, if you had to bet a oh, week's boy. pay, who would win a three-point shooting contest, Larry Bird or Reggie Miller? Now? No. In, in their prime. In, <laughs> in the, 
Look, by the way, you won, just to let you know. He probably going to be favoritism. He probably going to say Reggie. I don't think he's going to say himself. Maybe so, but let's see. Because <laughs> he know he coached them and all that. So he's probably going to give it to Reggie. Let's see. You, you well, won this. Here's how I'll put it, Reggie. If you was my <laughs> teammate in the pros, I would win hands down. But since I had the opportunity, the great opportunity to coach you, I'd say you win. Oh, okay. I, look, I, I'm just letting you know. I picked you. It was a, it was a dead tie 2-2. I was the tiebreaker, no question. You at the three-point competition, walking in the locker room. Who's playing? Did you really say that? Who's playing for a second? Yeah, I did. I scored <laughs> so bad <laughs> because I, I, you know, I, I didn't realize there's so much tension on it. You know, I'm out there every day in front of these fans. And who were some of know, the guys? Who were some of the guys in the competition at that time when you walked in? Who was in, in that field? You know, I, 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 come on, I coach. Think you know. Dead. <laughs> no, I don't. I don't really remember. Dell Ellis. Um, Dell Ellis. Yeah, Dell. Uh, what's Hodges. the kid that's ref? Yeah, Hodges. John Sumble. Uh, yeah, the kid that's refereeing now. The one oh, that always. Um, right. Oh, uh, um, Lester. Leon Wood. Leon Wood. Leon, Leon Wood. Wood. Leon Wood never crossed the three point line. All he did was ever ever. Sh- <laughs> he always shot three. So I thought he might be the competition. Because I've seen him shoot before games, and, you know, he'd knock him down. So I'm, when I walked in there, he's sitting there, and I said, boy, them red, white, and blue, blue balls are so slippery, I can't hold on to them. And uh, the next time I came, I said, okay, now they're down in the nitty-gritty. Who's coming in second? So you already know who's going to win this. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I what, got lucky because I almost got beat in the first round. <laughs> but what was the reaction after you said that, like, oh, that's just Larry Legend, or did it get dead silence in there? It was silence. I think they I like were a little it. nervous. I like it. I think they were nervous. And then the but, walk, uh, the walk off with your hand up. I mean, come on, coach. Come on. Well, I, I was struggling in that final round in Chicago. I know that, and I just got hot there the last two and a half racks. You know, when you're shooting them, you don't know what the score is. Right. But I had a feeling by the way the crowd was going, I had to make the last one. And uh, when I let it go, I, I felt it. Was, you know, sometimes you shoot them, you think they're going in, and they don't. But that one there looked perfect all the way. So if it would have bounced out, I would have felt like an idiot. Well, but did, it went in, I got lucky and got the check and went home. To tell you, to tell you <laughs> about pressure, when you were our head coach, we were 10-1 and one because we, we knew we had to win against one team all the time, and that was the Boston Celtics. I don't care what we oh, did anywhere else. You didn't oh, tell yeah. us. You didn't tell us, but everyone around you said you guys have to beat Boston, especially in Boston where we were five and one. So you talk about right, pressure. Rich. That's pressure is playing. <laughs> well, under I tell you, the Reggie, the, the, one of the gr- one of the greatest moments I ever had in sports was, you know, I never, I always wanted to win in Boston, but I, I never want Boston to lose because I know it's a great sports town and all that. But the first time we went into Boston was one of the greatest experiences after that game that I ever felt. Uh, it's like winning the championship. I can remember we had a backdoor play the whole game, but we knew it was going to work, and you and Mark waited to last about a minute, minute and a half to, in the game to run it, and you went back door and got fouled, and we knew right there that iced the game. Well, Coach. What a play and, and a lot of time. Coach, thank you for everything that you've done for the game and for me, um, having a chance to play against you and then – work underneath you and to learn everything about the game. I, I truly appreciate I wouldn't be at the level I am, be at this desk, have the success I had if it wasn't for you. So I appreciate you calling in and giving us the insight on Dream Team 1 and, and the Olympics and the Pacers. So we really do appreciate it. Well, thank you, Reggie. It's an honor. And um, uh, I think you're one of the greatest. And I know you're one of the greatest. And it's just an honor to have you to, to work for me for a little bit. But uh, you had great success, and you're still doing well, and I'm proud of you. And I apologize about the 2000 finals. It's my fault that we didn't get that championship, seriously. So I appreciate it. I'm sorry. Uh, that's Larry Bird, everyone. Thank you, guys. So appreciate it, Coach. Thank you. Sure. And good luck, Reggie. Bye. Thank you. The legend. The Dan Patrick Show, weekday mornings on Audience. All right, that wraps it up. Y'all, that was a good one right there. And I... 
Damn, I gotta figure out who who sent me this video, man. I I I, I forgot to write your name down, put your name down in notes. That's what I told myself I'm gonna start doing. Uh, but yeah, man, leave your comments down below what you think, man. That was a really good interview right there, man. That was a classic interview it's for me. That was classic right there. I, I gotta check out some more of his Dan Patrick show too. I wonder if that even still comes on. I know that's kind of I know that's old, but still, that was still legendary, man. But anyway, man. On to the next video, man. If y'all got some videos you want me to do, leave them down in the comments down below. I definitely will react to them. Uh, yeah, subscribe if you're new, man. Hit that like button. Turn on that bell. We uploading every single day, man. If you enjoy my channel, I appreciate you. I'll never miss an upload unless something happens. You know, I know I got sick at one point, like last week, but I still grinded out the videos. You know, it was a little slower, but we back in action, man. But, uh, yeah, that's about it, man. I'm on to the next video. Uh, also got an instrumental mixtape dropping June 23rd, so if you're definitely been dropping on this channel, so if you're interested in that, you know, look out for that. But uh, yeah, that's about it, man. I love y'all. Peace.